So what are your expectations? I know it's going to be hard. We have a lot of repeaters and some of them already have their national flags. But I am up for the challenge for I know that I have the purest intention towards the track and that is to empower everyone from all walks of life. Because and the pageant industry definitely be a words back. Like there's no doubt. I think she's such a genuine person and you can really see that in the way she expresses herself, the way she stands. And I think she just has a big heart and I really hope that I can be like her in a way that I really show who I am in my performance throughout the Miss Universe Philippines 2020 pageant. So the Bilana pandemia, the search is still on for the next Miss Universe Philippines queen. One of them will have the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of being Miss Universe Philippines 2020. Miss Universe Philippines 2020 is Miss Iloilo! Back in December when it was announced that uh, Miss Universe Philippines would be a separate pageant, so we really had to start from scratch. But it was also a good thing because we attacked it from the perspective that everything would be like a blank canvas. Whenever there's something new, you know that there's also a lot of risk, a lot of challenges. I've always wanted to be at the forefront of things. Being new doesn't really scare me or, or joining something that's um, unknown. The unknown doesn't really scare me. So whenever I think about the pageant and we all know that there are birthing pains when you're starting a new organization and a new pageant. I actually looked forward to it rather than feared it. Knowing that there are new people behind Miss Universe Philippines, I believe it really spoke to me because I think I want to be a part of that pioneer batch that really introduces a different image of what beauty queens are, of what Filipinas are. Actually, it excited me. To, to know that it would be a new organization, kind of like a fresh start. And I joined the pageant because I've experienced a lot of personal growth joining pageants before. And I thought that I would be experiencing much more growth joining Miss Universe Philippines, especially considering it would be the first edition. The person under observation has tested positive for the novel coronavirus. This is the first case in the country. The patient is currently admitted at a government hospital in Manila. It was February 14 when we launched it, and January may mga nag-positive na, na mga Chinese yata na nakapunta dito sa Philippines, and naalala ko sobrang traffic after yung February 14. It was a Friday also, and a payday, and maraming gusto makipag-date. So, alam ko, na-stuck kami sa traffic, papunta ng um, restaurant, sa Mandaluyong, at sobrang naming inisip. Iniisip ko the whole time, the whole travel, anong mangyayari kung biglang magko-close ang mundo? Personally, I thought it would be just one of those diseases that would just go away. So, uh, like for example, there was MERS before, there was another kind of SARS before. And at a certain point, uh, they did not become a major health problem for the Philippines in the same way that COVID became a problem for us. Because I was already looking at the um, Spanish flu, the history of that. Something big is really going to happen and I was very scared that during our first stint as the franchise owners of Miss Universe Philippines, parang baka papalpak. Pero, iniisip ko, if something would happen, it wasn't even our fault, of course. I mean, hindi naman namin kasalanan kung, kung hindi siya matutuloy. Pero nandun na. My thoughts was that it might not be even, it, we, not, we might not push through last year because of the um, pandemic, but I was hopeful that things would get better around June of 2020. And I knew it won't be better, but I knew that we could decide on June 2020 on what would be really 
realistic for us to push through with the competition. So, tamag tama leap year pa siya. In February 29, I think we did the runway challenge here in Uptown Parade. I remember that day also when everybody had to come back here to the studios and a lot of pageant fans are outside. Tapos sobrang dikit na mga tao. And minsan nang may misconstrue na lang ako na masungit ako, whatever. Pero that time medyo praning na talaga ako na I didn't want to talk to people. Gusto ko lang makaalis na dito kasi ang dami ng tao. I didn't know. I was joking pa with one flight attendant who one contestant was a flight attendant who came from China and then I sabi ko sa kanya, wala, baka dala mo yung virus, so sandito ko, ang daming daming tao, so tumakbo ako sa labas, tapos biglang ayaw ko na talaga makihalo-bilo. I was never really into pageants, um, only through Jonas because he was my friend. So this is the first time that I worked on a pageant and Miss Universe Philippines no less. So I was surprised by, by how professional the organization is. And when uh, the pandemic first hit and there was talk of a lockdown, I was so impressed with their attitude because the organization said primary for them was the safety of the girls. March 3, I thought and I already gave the instructions that everybody should go home, especially the contestants. I think here in Miss Universe, kasi, Despite all the problems and the shortcomings as an organization, we tried our best talaga that the safety of the contestants is our priority. I think it was a good call that we sent the contestants home on March 3. Well, Philippine authorities are set to implement a community quarantine of the entire region of Metro Manila this Sunday, and that's slow down the spread of COVID-19 in the country. When we heard about the lockdown, so that was, I think, um, the weekend before March 15, um, we thought that in a month or in two months, um, things would still get back to normal. I think in our heads, we were still hoping that, okay, the problem can be arrested. COVID um, as a problem can still be contained. But then it started becoming serious when every two weeks the lockdown would be extended. Our goal was really to fulfill the promises that we have made to ourselves as a board and as a creative team because we only wanted to show the best of the Philippines, the best of the Filipino. And Mahirap gawin yon. Mahirap gawin yun during that time, especially around March and April. April was the lowest point where everybody was lost, and May 1 was supposed to be the finals. The second, when we moved namin yung contest, May 1 dapat yun or May 4. And then, pagdating ng end of April, alam mong hindi pa rin kaya. So, we moved ulit ng June 24. Pagdating ng May, alam mo pa rin hindi kaya. So, we decided on October 25. I remember one day, I think that was in uh, April, latter part of April, when I received several emails from the sponsors telling me that they would be reviewing their participation uh, with Miss Universe Philippines 2020. And that really broke my heart um, because all of the hard work that uh, we put into it starting from December of last year until around early March, I felt like at that moment, um, I mean, all the sponsors could just go away. Knowing about the stories of the contestants and then more importantly, the reasons why they joined uh, the pageant it made me really want to uh, make the Miss Universe Philippines 2020 very successful. And so realizing that our resources could be taken away because of the situation, um, that was very, very difficult. Personally, I was also dealing with my own mental health problems. I had to go through a lot of things like, paano ko isipin yung re buong responsibility na to na ang daming mong um, co-workers, ang dami mong katrabaho, ang daming madadami ng mga tao, and ano yung future ng lahat. Ang daming kailangan bayaring, babayaring mga suppliers. You have to pay a lot of people and you don't know when to 
get the money from the clients, you don't know how to augment your income as a company. And it's just that in my mind, I was very grateful that I had a team that was very creative. We have a board that's very supportive. Buti na lang matatalino talaga yung mga taong nakapaligid sa akin. I guess I'm very blessed because I'm surrounded uh, with other pillars of Miss Universe Philippines with people whose hearts are on the right place. And all of them look at the problem as a clear opportunity to do something really meaningful. I remember there was that one Zoom call. We were all clueless as to how to move forward. And then Shamsi asked the question, what can we do in this very difficult time? And from there we realized after you know, a lot of soul searching, what Miss Universe Philippines can do. And that led or that gave birth to the three values, I'm sure you've heard of them, to be a harbinger of hope at a time when there was so much hopelessness, to be a rallying point uh, during a time when uh, there was so much division, and to be a role model uh, when people were looking for like a way forward on how best to succeed in this pandemic. And at the end of the day, it, the choice was clear. Do you give up or do you do something that um, can uplift other people given the power that you have. And I'm just so happy that Miss Universe Philippines chose to do the latter. The greatest challenge really was to convince the sponsors to still allot their resources to a beauty pageant. The onset of the COVID pandemic, people were asking, would people uh, still be interested in a beauty pageant given that there are so many uh, problems that people will have to face uh, because of COVID. But again, it goes back to what was the mission of Miss Universe Philippines and was that relevant? And at that time, the people did not just need uh, food, did not just need security, but they also need inspiration. And I'm glad that the brands realized that and they were on board with what we wanted to do. What were really the factors I think number one, you're already in it, so why quit? Number two, a lot of people invested their time and efforts on me, so I don't want to waste that. And then lastly, this is the first edition of this pageant, and it's historical, and it would be an honor to be part of it. You probably won't hear this from anybody, but being in a pageant, it's not a game. It's something that is really taxing because it takes a lot of hard work and dedication. So my mental health was my main concern because already being in the middle of a pandemic with the fear of the unknown, with the fear of what's been happening to other people around me, it was hard, it was heavy on all of us. So I was thinking, can I handle this? Can I handle the pressure of all of this all at once? But then, what really helped me go through that, of course, with the support of my family and my friends, my supporters, my fans, and everybody, what really helped me push through is that, you know, ultimately, there's a bigger goal to this. We're not just here to fight for the crown. We're not just here to get crowned as Miss Universe Philippines, but we're here now to, to bring hope to other people, to other Filipinos. I actually did think that Maybe this is not the year for me because as a breadwinner, I really need to find that stable job. I really need to put my family first, um, even over my dreams. And there was this moment that I was reflecting and I realized that I've sacrificed so much to be here. I've done a lot of things, things beyond the expectation of people. And my mom didn't raise me to be a quitter. So I decided to continue and sometimes you really need to have that pause in your life. You really need to think over again for the very reason why you wanted to win. And it gave me the energy to continue the battle. I realized that sometimes you really need to be the source and the image of strength. 
during the pandemic, I was able to continue the fight and I was able to continue my Miss Universe Philippines journey.